Hey there, today let's talk about a really cool movie from the late 70s called Dawn of the Dead. It's not just a scary movie, it's also funny, surprising, and sometimes sad, which makes it super interesting to watch. So here's a question for you, who was your favorite character in this movie? Share your answer below, we want to hear from you. Stay tuned for some cool facts about this movie. Keep watching to learn more, and don't forget to tell us about any special memories you have of watching it. Regarded as a classic by many, Dawn of the Dead, directed by Giorgio Romero, is often seen as a significant film in the horror genre. The story unfolds in the midst of a zombie outbreak, following four people who take shelter in a shopping mall to survive and gather supplies. While the film has received praise, some might question its realism, especially in how the characters behave. Certain scenes show characters making questionable decisions, which can make the overall story seem less believable. Additionally, some criticize the acting and the plot for not making sense at times. Despite its attempt to delve into themes of survival and societal collapse, the execution falls short, making some viewers question its lasting appeal. Dawn of the Dead still stands out in the horror genre, but it may not connect with everyone. Dawn of the Dead, released in 1978, showcases the work of a make-up special effects school in Monison, Pennsylvania, known as the Douglas School of Business. The character Joe Shelby's biker van driver stands out with his distinctive funny cowboy hat and glasses. He drives a blue Cadillac similar to the one featured in The Devil's Rejects. The movie is notable for its gritty portrayal of a zombie apocalypse and its impact on society. Its use of practical effects adds authenticity to the horror. Joe Shelby's portrayal adds a unique touch to the film with his quirky attire and vehicle choice. Overall, Dawn of the Dead remains a classic in the horror genre for its innovative makeup effects and compelling narrative. In the 1978 movie, a character suggests that zombies are drawn to a shopping mall because it holds importance from their past lives. According to this idea, the undead remember the mall as a significant place which leads them to invade it. Notably, when this character becomes a zombie, he still remembers the way to the survivor's hideout. In a unique twist, the 2004 remake of the 1978 film, also called Dawn of the Dead, came out before the filming of the fourth installment in the zombie series Land of the Dead had even started. This odd order of production shows how the movies in the series were made. John Amplis, the casting director for the 1978 film, had previously acted in another movie directed by Romero called Martin. When given a small role in Dawn of the Dead as the leader of the housing insurgency, this connection influenced his character's name, Martinez, as a nod to his earlier role in Romero's movies. In short, the 1978 film explores why zombies are drawn to a shopping mall, suggesting that memories from their past lives guide their actions. The production of the series took an unusual turn with a 2004 remake coming out before its successor started filming. Additionally, John Amplis's cameo and character name in Dawn of the Dead reflect his previous work with Romero and Martin. Due to budget constraints and limited technology during production, the filmmakers couldn't review daily footage. Instead, the film was sent to a lab in New York for processing. A lab tech would inform George if everything looked acceptable. Sometimes reshoots were necessary if the footage didn't meet standards. Ken Four and Scott H. Reiniger, actors from the original film, also appeared in the 2004 remake. Even now, people visit the shopping mall where the movie was filmed. The movie Dawn of the Dead was released on VHS by CBS Fox Video in Australia and New Zealand in 1985. Before the release of Night of the Living Dead in 1968, the filmmaker behind Dawn of the Dead was primarily known for his work in industrial filmmaking. He created TV commercials, promotional featurettes, and industrial training films. One notable project he worked on was shooting short films for the television series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Additionally, he provided his voice to the horror game City of the Dead, a spin-off to Georgia Romero's Dead Films. Unfortunately, the game's distributor, Hip Interactive, went bankrupt and the game was never released in 2006. In the movie, the Arminius HW5T revolver is prominently shown, used by both the people in the apartment and the Philadelphia SWAT team, including Peter and Roger. Interestingly, the director was supposed to write and direct Resident Evil initially, but left due to disagreements over the screenplay. In a scene where Peter and Steven gear up to face raiders, Peter takes off his jewelry, including several rings. One of these rings belonged to Roger, who wore it before he passed away in the film. 
This attention to detail adds layers to the characters' relationships and emphasizes the emotional weight of their journey. Passing on Roger's ring to Peter during their confrontation with danger speaks volumes about the bonds formed amidst chaos. These subtle details enhance the story, turning Dawn of the Dead from a simple horror movie into a deeply moving cinematic experience. Crafted with care and thought, every element in the film contributes to its lasting impression on audiences worldwide. Galen Ross, who portrayed Fran, took a firm stance against screaming in the film, asserting that it would diminish Fran's strength as a female character. She conveyed this to Georgia Romero once, and he never requested it again. Tom Capusta's biker character, recognized by his blonde hair, beard, and black biker cap hat with glasses, rides a blue Harley Davidson panhead chopper motorcycle. Throughout the mall invasion scenes, he can be seen maneuvering through crowds of bikers and their girlfriends, wielding weapons and riding his motorcycle. Additionally, he engages in shooting at zombies in the parking lot in the European version. In one scene, Peter shoots a zombie portrayed by Nick Meistendria in the head. The effect was achieved by pulling a soup can lid attached to fishing line through layers of mortician's wax applied to the actor's forehead. The production of the movie took place inside a live retail mall during the closing and opening hours, making the production company liable for any damages or thefts. Despite over 100 extras, cast, and crew, the exact extent of theft remains unknown due to the limited inventory systems at the time. Romero expressed a desire for more zombie shots outside the mall, but he preferred practical effects over CGI, acknowledging its necessity in certain situations. Savini, a Pittsburgh native, expressed his excitement at being part of a Romero film, reflecting the local pride in contributing to such a project. The preference for practical effects and the unique filming location contributed to the film's authenticity and impact. In the 1978 movie Dawn of the Dead, based on the novel, characters' surnames were revealed Peter's last name is Washington, Rogers is DeMarco, and Francine's is Parker. Dr. Foster's first name is James, and Berman's is Sidney. Despite being considered for a role in Oliver Stone's U-Turn, he couldn't make it due to scheduling conflicts. The part went to Stone's producer, Richard Rutowski. Tom Savini criticized the blood in the film, likening it to melted crayon. However, Georgia Romero appreciated its lurid quality, deeming it suitable for the comic book-style narrative. In the 1978 movie Dawn of the Dead, some actors playing zombies frequented a late-night bar called the Brown Derby in the Monroeville Mall. One night, they got drunk, stole a golf cart, and crashed into a marble pillar, causing $7,000 worth of damage. Due to budget constraints, the film couldn't hire professional stunt people outside of drivers. Makeup artist Tom Savini and his assistant Tasso Instavrakis volunteered for stunts. They executed almost every stunt in the film, though not all went smoothly. Savini nearly missed his cardboard boxes while diving over the mall rail, injuring his legs and back. Stavrakis's swing from a banner was poorly planned, resulting in him slamming into the ceiling. Despite their names being credited, Joe Pilato and other officers at Police Dock do not appear in either the U.S. theatrical or European cuts of the film.